Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to talk about how to apply person-centered therapy. And person-centered therapy is a humanistic therapy. So we've been talking about if you're in the behavioral health profession long enough, you eventually become a humanist. And so we're going to talk about what a little bit what that means. And Carl Rogers, potentially the father of uh, humanistic therapy, and he's got this great quote that I like to share that first we accept ourselves, then we change. You know, so often we feel inadequate and we got to do stuff and we got to heal stuff before we change. And ultimately what he's, he's saying, because he believed different from the existentialist, he believed you're actually born with a drive towards self-actualization and that there is an innate growth force. Okay, so that's different from the existential. He believed there was an innate growth force. And I love the symbol of the tree. I know what y'all are saying is, man, this guy should have been an illustrator. Is that a tree and a sun? <laughs> but I like this because the idea here, and, and really it sums up kind of Carl Rogers' theory, is that if you're in good relationship, you will blossom. You will become who you are. And yeah, there might be a lot of layers to peel off because we're born with so many injunctions and so much societal and parental expectations and school is set up in a way that may not be conducive to how you learn and grow and so forth. So you get where I'm coming from. But just like the tree, you know, there's no actuary tables for trees. As long as they're in good relationship with the earth and with the sky, there's no pollutants or few pollutants. It's just gonna do its thing. And we don't have to tell it when to um, uh, shed its leaves, you know, like, hey, fall's coming up. Let's set up a smart goals to figure out when to shed its leaves. The tree knows it does that. And then it also knows how to bring them back in the spring. And so that's what I think Rogers was getting at is that if we first, when we start accepting ourselves with all of our um, you know, uniquenesses and all those things that maybe we were supposed to suppress and push away, uh, that we start accepting ourselves and then we become who we fully are. And, and I believe Fritz Perls has a saying very similar to this as well. But so really, um, and, and you know, Rogers, frankly, as he got older um, and, and as his theory evolved, he goes, the techniques are not near as important as the attributes of the counselor. And we'll talk more about that. Teak kettle counseling, a lot of your counseling is going to be people coming in that just need to let steam out. They just need to let steam off in a safe place with somebody who's probably heard this kind of stuff before. They're not going to be shocked by, you know, strange thoughts or, you know, uh, behaviors and all that kind of stuff. And so it's like you let the steam out so that it doesn't, um, you know, boil over and become problematic. And you need to do that with somebody, a counselor that you trust and who's truly listening. Um, now, <laughs> this may seem really simple. To me, this is the hardest therapy to do, okay? And it's an ongoing lifelong process to do it well. Because how many people truly listen? I mean, how many people are literally waiting, uh, you know, hearing somebody talk while waiting to speak, if they're listening at all? So we're truly trying to get into the mindset of a client and um, be able to fully understand or to the best extent possible, understand what they're experiencing. And in that process, we want to express empathy for their journey. We want to, um, uh, you know, a, extend positive regard, okay? And this, is, this can be easy for folks who've been traumatized or whatever, but this is also for folks that have done things that are um, disagreeable and, and not, uh, you know, that society condones. So we need to make sure that we're extending positive regard to everybody. Um, it, it's easy to do that with people that are suffering, but if you do it with people that have made really bad mistakes, then you really are moving into being a really wise counselor. And the congruence is that we're going to be who we are. We're going to be authentic in ourselves. And Rogers even has a story of feeling bored in session and saying that. He goes, I want to tell you what I'm experiencing with you. The reason for this is I'm wondering if other people experience you as that as well. So again, it kind of like what we were talking about in the existential video is really 
paying attention to the professional relationship, the counselor client relationship, and learning to be assertive and authentic within that relationship so that people can learn how to do that and take it to their outside world with their partners and their colleagues and so forth. All right. I will also say that, you know, Hollywood depicts counseling as people talk and then have a cathartic experience or discover something in their childhood and their change. I'm sorry, it's, it, it makes for sexy TV, but that's not how it works. A lot of behavior changes practice. If you are trying to um, be more open-minded or more positive within reason or more mindful, that requires practice and you need to, um, you know, I mean, if it's writing the things down on the mirror in your bathroom so that you see it really often, or if you've got some kind of reminders on your phone, but just know that behavior change and really changing our thoughts requires practice. It's not just going to be, it's a little bit like you, you didn't learn piano by taking six lessons. <laughs> For most people, the vast majority of people, whether learning a language or an instrument or to draw or paint, it, it was a lifelong, ever-evolving process, okay? And it took practice. The piano player had to practice and practice and practice before they really gained mastery. And this is the same thing for behavior change. Unfortunately, Hollywood doesn't depict it as such. And TV is influential. It totally is. So. In terms of our mindset, also as the counselor, we need to attempt to see the good. I also like Marshall Linham talks about this when we're working with borderline personality disorder is seeing the kernel of truth in the actions, whether they slashed somebody's tires or they had a suicide attempt. What was that kernel of truth? Oh, I, and you know, we even will voice that. I can see how you would want to do that. I could see how that would make you so angry you'd want to slash tires, but I'm wondering what we could do differently. Okay, so we always want to recognize that. And I like this. When I'm sitting with a client, even when I'm in class, I like to think of, okay, I've got this light. Again, you like my illustration here. This is the sun. <laughs> this is like a counselor and a client. And that I'm trying to project just some light that way. Okay, it certainly can't hurt. But I like to project that we're both taking in some light and I'm projecting it to this person and I'm receiving it. Okay, so the mindset in person centered is really important. Okay, I like to point out play therapy with person centered because play is the language of children. And so when you look at good play therapy, you're noticing, you're like, oh, you're choosing to play with the red ball now, you're choosing to play with the train. You're not sure how to do that, but you're trying to figure it out. So we're essentially giving that person um, unconditional positive regard and tracking what they do. So that kid knows that they are being um, observed and in a good way and in a, a facilitative way. And then, you know, that rarely happens. You know, if you're a parent and your kid's playing, you're preparing dinner or you're watching TV or folding clothes or whatever, but the same thing, I, I think play therapy is great. Uh, 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 shoot, what am I trying to say here? It's great training for anybody wanting to do counseling because you have to really look and understand what the person is doing. And so you're going to point out the good things here. So with person-centered therapy and Carl Rogers, this is just a few of the main things that I think you can take away and actually use with clients. And again, if this is helpful in any way, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment. Let me know what would be helpful to see. I'm going to be posting a lot more videos to get ready for my classes in the spring, <laughs> so it is helpful to know what else you would like to see. All right, y'all, take care. We will talk to you in the next video.